Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and I'm here with a uh, unboxing. We're gonna we're gonna be opening that up and taking a look at the uh, Pathfinder flip mat of the uh, Noble Estate. Um, it folds out to be a 24 inch by 30 inch mat that has one inch squares marked on each side. Um, by and um, for like you know Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, of course, similar games. Uh, and this is a Noble Estate. It's a it's a manor here. And take a look. Of course, we got. Uh, comes not quite in a box but in cellophane and you get you know a bit of an image there and then you get sort of these little um, little images here on the back we're not going to strain our eyes with that you have the full thing we're gonna open it up and take a look now this is a interesting one I'm, when I first saw sort of what what it looked like they did here I was not exactly happy, um, and it took a while before I came up with an idea for what I'd use it for that I was like, wait a minute, maybe I do want that. Maybe that that can be useful. Um, I'll go over it in more detail in a moment, but right now you can kind of see here's, here's what this looks like. It's sort of the outside of this manor house with these rooftops, chimneys, that kind of things, you know, guard walls, little inner garden. And um, if you flip it over, you get um, well that identical inner garden. Um, the thick outer walls that those guard walls are on, and uh, I mean you can see the fireplaces because now you're just looking inside that same single-story sort of manor house and the stable that's attached. This, at first, seemed like, all right, what's the point? I, I can imagine from this that this has a roof. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of go over some of the ideas when we get back to that other side. Um, right now, I'm going to... I'm going to... Let me go in just a little bit and focus that. I think that's focused. Anyways, um, so we're going to take a look at some of this, and I'll sort of uh, let you know what idea I had with it. Um, but in general, um, I guess we'll start here with the stables, because they're right here, um, which have, you know, sort of a wider door up here, and then a door over here where there's hay, and there's things in here. It looks like there's barding and stuff for the horses, saddle and horseshoes, um, and there's the different stables for horses to be. So... You know, you're gonna have your nobles. They gotta have horses, right? Um, so you get that. And, you know, for them to have their horses, and we can turn it around. Um, we see little guard posts that have, you know, sort of arrow slit kind of windows in there. Um, and you know, the door that actually enters the estate with a road leading on. Um, a little garden out front. And, uh, of course, the inner walled section here is this sort of garden area. Uh, there's, oh, there's a ladder here, and I just noticed over here. Actually, I didn't know that. So that's how the guards get up to the walls. They did think about that, because that was something I was wondering. But, yeah, they've already thought of that. That's how they, the guards would get up onto um, the upper walls. And, oh, I'm also just now noticing, it looks like there are, like, fish you can... You can kind of see that. The little orange spots there. Mm. See, it looks like there's a little fish swimming around in the little pool there. And now I wanted to show you that detail, so now I have to come back out and... Refocus everything again. Hope I get it right. Yeah, you have little statues beside the pool. You have big um, sort of hedges around here. Um, a couple different entryways. You have, you know, here, over here, and the main one here. Um, but yeah, so there's this outer garden that's just going to be able to duplicated on the other side. Um, See, I guess we'll start with sort of from this entryway that enters. Um, there's a little room here with some tables. 
in this hallway here, which has these very small or shared small bedrooms. Um, and across from them is a few fireplaces um, with, you know, logs. And there's some tables with ladles and what are maybe, you know, cleavers and spices. It, it's sort of a kitchen and servant area. So from here back is sort of, uh, you know, the servant's entrance and then the servant area, um, you know, for the manor. So this is where the people live and work that are, you know, taking care of whoever is, is out here. Um, and then we keep going around, spinning it around. Uh, from here we enter out, and also you can just sort of see how plain this area is. Whereas once you get out here, we get these carpets or, t or fine tiles where it's much much simpler back here, just sort of stonework. Um, but yeah, you have, you know, this little hallway here with the statue and a single bedroom over here. Um, I think maybe it's uh, a guest room that maybe isn't used very often, but it's over on the servant side of the, the place. But it's, it's a nice room, so it would be for some sort of distinguished guest, perhaps. It has a table in here with a couple of chairs, a nice rug. Uh, a fireplace of its own with some logs to keep it stocked. Um, and then we get, and then from leading here we lead into the center part where you have what I view as probably the main entrance into the, uh, into the manor. You have the big old fireplace right in the middle, so that's sort of the centerpiece. Um, and you, you know, you sort of have this entryway, you enter, there's a fireplace, there's sort of what looks like a, a couple steps up to, you know, there's, you know, some sofas up here, maybe a table between them, and you know, it looks like, I don't know if they're tapestries or something hanging on the wall behind it, maybe they're, they're flags. Um, you get some storage on the sides, but um, sort of this up here would be whoever, whoever the noble themselves is. That's where they go. And then their company would be out here, around here, with each with tables, uh, this one even has a bowl of fruit, so there is no dining room in this whole manor, which seemed a little strange, but I suppose the idea is people sit on these luxurious couches with the tables in front of them, and, and that's where they would they would eat their group meals, is sort of around this big fireplace here, and and there's, you know, paintings on the walls, and, and just decorations around the room um, with the elaborate tiles and the rugs. Um, so you sort of have this main general meeting area. From there, we have a little door that runs off this side, more, you know, tapestries and statues, a uh, similar hall to what was over on the other side, with a bedroom on one side, could again probably be another guest room, or they, um, they certainly don't need to be guest rooms, they could be, like, if the nobles have children, they would be the children's rooms, um, that would work as well, but it's a uh, very similar a fancy bed, you know, a couch for sitting, table, fireplace, some storage. Across here we have what is basically a pair of rooms before it dead ends, and this is something separate. Um, but essentially you enter a little sitting room um, with a fireplace of its own, a table with some chairs, and a few um, sort of couches that enters into what would, uh, I guess, be the master bedroom. Um, now the reason I say that is because these are both the same color bed. This is a different color, so clearly it's different. Plus it has its own, like, separate, like, little private room with it, so it's, it's nicer, I guess. Um, but again, a fireplace, um, some sitting areas, table, rugs, etc. Um... But yeah, so that's sort of, this would be probably the, the actual noble's room, guest room or children's room or something like that. On the other side was servant's rooms. Um, and I guess over here, we have this little area that sort of comes off of the garden the, on this side's entrance. And it's more or less the garden, or the garden shed. It has, looks like, garden implements, um, whatever, sacks, maybe soil or something, wheelbarrow pitchforks. So it's it's the gardening tools. It's for probably on this side is maybe actually keeping taking care of the horses as well as the garden itself. So all of that is on this side. Now when we flip it, um, 
This is exactly the same. Um, out to this exit, which is open. Uh, so you see the doors down there, and that, all the same. I, uh, you can also see the ladders that are, you know, invisible, but in shadow a bit here. I sort of wish that there was some sort of indication of where the doors were, um, on this end. But I suppose it's mostly, it's not such a complex sort of doorway out that it's hard to remember. Um... And at least for the main door, I believe the flower pots help give it away. Uh, but for the most part, this side is just a bunch of roof, which seems, and to me, definitely originally seemed um, like a bunch of garbage. Like, what's the point? And in almost all cir circumstances, this is, for most uses of this map, this is more or less a one-sided map. It's the other side. This has very little use. However, the idea that I like for it is the idea that I want... If I have the players where the goal for this location is that they are not granted access, but that they need to get something out of this building. I have chimneys. I can know where the different doors are. I might even actually use vis-a-vis um, -vis and sort of mark where the doors are so they know that. Um... You know, more or less put, you know, put the guards stationed where they're at um, on here, and more or less make it where this is what the players get for when they get there. They don't get to see what's inside. They don't get to see the layout inside of this place or know which side the servants' quarters are. The fact that there's a separate entryway that doesn't enter to the main uh, building on one side here. It's just a little bit of a shad. They do not get those details. All they get is a bunch of roof. Now, if they want to climb on the roof and try and enter through a chimney, that's, that's fine. That Those are marked. Uh, if they want to try and avoid guards and get around and choose one of the entrances, fine. Um, but because... We just got a whole lot of roof here. If you're going to use it, it's going to have to be something like that. Uh, if you, you know, that that's all that I can think of at the very least. Um, because, yeah, this side is definitely a lot of roof. Um, it may be worth it to you just for this side. It is a nice, it's a full-size, noble mansion. Um, part of me wishes, you know, why don't we get an upper floor? That would be ideal. But we don't. And so originally I wasn't going to get it. Until I came up with the idea, I can make it where the goal is to get past this. This is what you show the players, and this is the obstacle that they have. So the fact that it's just a bunch of roof is the obstacle. It is what the the mission, more or less, is made up of. Um, you know, the, the quest that they're on. And if you have any other ideas for... For how to use how you know how to use the map, or particularly how to use this side of the map, please comment down below. Let me know. I'd love to hear and expand what I might be able to use this for. Because obviously, as a general, you know, noble mansion, this this side that we see, the inside could be used, you know, as you know, generic noble mansion. Plenty of you know, just general layout, easy to throw down. But to use the side that's just a bunch of roof. I had, I had to think about it for a bit before I came up with something that uh, that I thought would be uh, sufficient. Um, so yeah, if you have any other uh, any ideas yourself, please let me know. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, it's uh, this is the Pathfinder flip map for the Noble Estate. Um, you know, I'll leave a link down below if you want to. Go pick it up yourself, where you could uh, check it out online. Um, you know, uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.